Hi guys, this week we're just going to show you a few of the little tips and tricks we use um, when starting a fire. We've had a few days of rain and there's still rain around today so a lot of the wood's really wet. So we just wanted to show a little bit of a tips and tricks or something that we use to get a a more wet fire going. I understand like every guy out there that goes camping is the king of fire and everyone's got their own way. All we're doing is just trying to show uh, people that don't know a few little things that can help you along the way. So one of the best things you can do is actually pre-cut and sort of all, I like to organize the timber sort of in size. I always try and get some thin, real thin stuff, almost like tinder, but we don't use it for that, just to get the fire going. Um, then I like to have a pile of timber about the size of your, like your finger width sort of thing. The next one up from that's about wrist size, you know, about an inch or two in diameter. And then after that, your bigger hardwood that is once you've got enough heat in the fire it's just going to keep it going but this is more just sort of the tinder side of things to help you get um, a lot of heat in there so we'll take you through a few of the things we keep in the car um, on hand we do have more than this sort of in the grab and go bag um, and stuff like that but this is just a few things that I keep in a little container in the back drawer. So starting sort of from the lower end of things, working up, um, you obviously have just a pack of matches. These, I almost never use them. I, like they're great if everything's bone dry, there's no wind, and you just want to strike one and sort of drop a match into it. Um, but they're just, they're no good really for actually lighting fires. They're um, probably the last thing I would go and grab. Um, next up from that, it's just your standard Bic lighter. These are cheap and easy. Um, we always have a few just sort of in the car. Real easy way just to um, get a fire going. And they last a long time. And they don't take up much room either. So then you go uh, to something like a ferro rod. These come in all shapes and sizes and are really, really reliable. So the best thing about these is any weather, like I can drop this in a creek or a puddle and it's still gonna create spark and flame. Um, and the spark that comes off that is actually a really intense heat. So as long as you set your fire up properly and the tinder and you can catch one of those flames, it's gonna go up really nice and easy. The next thing that we always try and keep a good stock of is what you're actually using as your tinder. So there's a million different options out there. One of the best that I've used is just cotton wool balls and you smear a bit of Vaseline in them. Uh, they strike really easy and burn for quite a while to get uh, heat in your know, small sticks. But you can buy um, uh, pre-made things like these. Um, they're just sort of uh, cotton wool uh, tightly wound with a bit of wax stuff to keep the fire going. Um, these red ones have a lot of the wax in them. So one of those will burn uh, normally for about 60 seconds. So if you've got that flame going for that long, over uh, underneath, sorry, a few small sticks, it really does start to pick up. Um, there's also products like these little wet fire tabs. They can be completely submerged in water, strike onto them and they'll light up. Um, there's a million of them, but like a few ones that we have, like fat rope stick. This is actually rope, tightly wound. 
it's actually been sort of soaked in wax so you just fray up the ends um, then like these are little uh, beeswax fire starters with cotton wool so for those that don't know uh, whether you're striking a ferro rod or lighting a big lighter onto it the biggest thing that helps you is surface area so with something like that uh, you really want to like pull it apart and fan it out to make it as big as possible so the bigger surface area is going to catch the flame and start uh, burning easier these are really good as well all this is is a magnesium bar so basically you just use a striker which you normally get with a ferro rod and you scrape like that <clears throat> little shavings of magnesium onto your tinder what that does is when the uh, the spark and the flame catches that it burns really really hot so it just helps get that intense heat into your um, timber that you're trying to start your fire with rather than striking and getting a little flame off uh, you know a timber shaving or something that will sort of continue burning so most people do know the elements to a fire is oxygen um, heat and fuel so your heat's your flame fuel is your timber and oxygen is yeah oxygen what we got a while ago that is a massive help is one of these little pocket bellows so a bellows tool they've been used for a very very long time it's basically a way of uh, forcing uh, concentrated air into a fire and you'll be amazed at what that can actually do to help you if you've got a little bit of heat in there and it's sort of it's almost half suffocated by your timber just by using one of these and forcing oxygen into there really heats it up and can spread it out for you so these tools are great they're made by epiphany outdoor gear we'll put a link to the product in the description but basically they just come in this little tube it's just a little stainless steel tube and just extends out so there's a wide end all the way to the narrow end so obviously you're blowing in this end and it concentrates the oxygen into your fire we've found this hugely helpful not even just getting a fire going um, if sort of mid-afternoon you've neglected the fire a bit and it's down to some coals and stuff like that uh, you can throw a bit of a small timber back on and start blowing some oxygen into it and it really reignites that heat and gets it spreading and going again so something like that it's so cheap and easy to keep uh, in the car especially because it goes down to that small um, definitely worth having so our last resort option uh, <clears throat> if you're feeling lazy it can be your first resort but with wet timber the best thing we've actually used is ever fires we've talked about these before and they're a really simple idea but they work so well so basically they're just stones I'm in these waterproof containers and you can pour any kind of fuel in there that you like in here we've just poured um, methylated spirits so what happens is you pour the metho in basically soak that rock in the metho then all you have to do is grab one of these out put some sticks on top and all you need is one spark from your ferro rod or your big lighter or your match or whatever you're using and that's going to burn for several minutes a really hot flame because of the methylated spirits soaked through the stone what that's going to do is nine times out of ten 
by the time this burns out, that heat is going to get into the, you know, wet timber. And from there, you can start building up in the size of your timber. So we really uh, only use these as a last resort kind of deal, but they're great to have because they're just so easy and they are completely reusable. So once you've got that in there, strike it up and the heat's got into your timber. All we normally do is grab, you know, a spare stick or something like that around camp, pull it out of the fire. Normally it's still burning itself. Um, extinguish the flame, you know, just suffocate the flame, put it aside, let it cool off, and then straight from the fire that you've started, once it's cooled off, throw it back in here with the methylated spirits. You can see how grubby it is. Um, but they're still good to go for the next time you want to use it. So in the past, uh, if you haven't seen, we have given some of these away before. The guys at Everfire were nice enough to come on again and offered to give uh, one away to a viewer. So all you gotta do if you wanna win one of these Everfire kits for yourself is we'll have a photo of this fire with the Everfire product next to it on our Facebook page. Just go on that post, comment on there why you would like an Everfire and you'll go into the running. Uh, it'll be up for about a week or so, maybe a bit longer than a week, and then we'll pick a winner and you can grab one of these yourself for free. Something we use in the car a lot and we use them for plenty of other things, not just fire starting, is these like little Altoids steel tins. These are really, really good for making like a little kit. Um, you can just like in there, you could easily fit like a ferro rod and a striker, a few tinder quick tabs or wet fires and everything that you need to start a fire. And then that is all you need to really carry in your pocket or around camp, throw it in your car. Then if the conditions are real crap, you grab that out and it's a lot easier to get a fire going. Um, we use them for everything, like we've even got ones like full of ear cleaners and nail clippers, all your smaller stuff. It's a good way to organize in your setup. Um, you can just grab a pack of whatever you need, whack it all in one tin. If you really, really wanted, you can just run a like a strip of duct tape or Gorilla tape around the edge and keep it completely waterproof. So you could throw that whole tin in the river, grab it out, be perfectly dry. So like that's a magnesium bar with a ferro rod on the spine. Um, throw that in there and the striker, a wet fire, a tinder quick tab in there and your pocket bellows tool in there. So that right there is more than enough to get a fire going in pretty wet conditions. As long as you put the effort in to preparing your size timber in the first place. Um, and you really wanna work up, obviously, smallest to largest, build your heat, and that'll get your fire going. That pocket bellows tool can help in so many different situations, so real easy way of doing it. And you can fit plenty more in there. You, <coughs> you can easily fit, you know, big lighters and stuff like that in. If you're not comfortable using a ferro rod, um, it's a real easy way. One thing I will say, <coughs> um, just for beginners or people who have never seen them before, so ferro rods, I'll show you on this. They have a black coating on them. And remember guys, like there's plenty of people out there that have never used them before. So it seems simple, but it's a good tip. You actually need to scrape the black coating off. Like you can probably see there. What you're gonna have to use there is 
a bit of steel. This can be the back of a knife or anything like that. These strikers normally come with, you know, your little uh, kit, ferro rod sort of thing. Basically, it's there's a 90 degree angle, so it's quite quite a sharp angle on the spine of the bit of metal, and you're going to want to strike it along like that. So you won't get a strike when you're scratching the coating off, but once you have that coating off. you will get a strike. You can see it's a lot smoother there. And you do actually need a fair bit of force. So you want to be sort of pulling the ferro rod up while you're pushing your striker down together and pull along the spine. Um, the first time I ever tried to use it, uh, yeah, I was not having any luck because I didn't get shown that. So, yeah, you really need that force and the friction of the sharp edge scraping the coating off. Basically, you just want to practice at directing your spark. The easiest way to do it is if you can actually keep the striker still aimed at where you want it to go and pull the ferro rod back along the spine and sort of aim your spark into your tinder uh, pouch. That's enough talking about all the little components that we use. Like I said, I know there's going to be plenty of guys out there that tell me I'm doing it wrong or they do it this way or whatever. If all we do is help one person that's not that good at building fires, that's all we care about. There's plenty of different ways to build your fire up, like a, the most probably stereotypical ones, your pyramid, like in a bit of a circle, everything leaning in on each other, like a teepee. I like the, I don't know what you call it, it's like a cross hatch, like a hashtag sort of thing, just to let some air in underneath. I always like to build the base with a couple of thicker bits, sort of like your wrist size. Put up with those, then your smaller stuff on top, then the heat from that fire that you get going sort of can start eating into those bits and then build up on top of that. That's just personal preference, everyone's different. You do you. Uh, we're in Victoria, that's all you need to know. It's wet, the wood's wet. Everything's wet except our little tinder tabs, so we're going to try and get it going just with them. If it all turns to crap, uh, we've got those ever fires that never have failed us. Um, they just put that much heat for so long, it just, yeah, it dries the timber out, starts it burning, gets that much heat, you're good to go. But we'll try and get started today just with a ferro rod and a little tinder tab um, and just sort of show you the process of how we build it up. Maybe a little bit OCD but I like to sort of organize your timber at the start. The best thing about that is it's all there ready to grab onto um, while you're trying to feed your fire. So this is what I was saying those sort of wrist size pieces maybe a bit smaller I like a bit of a bed of those, um, that way once, once you start getting heat in your fire it's already starting to get into these. You just want to make sure that underneath there's still room for the air to get under because air is going to help you out <coughs> a lot when it starts going, especially with your little pocket bellows. Like I said before, I'll just throw a few of this sort of spindly stuff on. As long as it's dry, it's fine. Just for the purpose of the video, we thought we'd just use what we threw in here before. One of these little wet fire tabs. You can see it's just quite a waxy sort of texture. It breaks away.
This here is just a scraper, magnesium bar, and a little ferro rod. So we're just trying to get it going with this. So you can probably see just a few little shavings of magnesium in there. You don't need much, but if you end up with a little ball of it, it's really good. I need that tinder quick tab. So with those wet fires, it can sort of just fall through what you built pretty easily. So I'll just show you with one of these tinder quick tabs, you basically pull them apart. You can start fanning them out. This is what I was talking about with surface area. If you have that much surface area to catch your spark, it's a lot easier. Now, they'll actually burn for a little bit on their own. And you can see there, it's just sort of caught, caught hold with the wet fire that sort of went down in between. Another big thing that people early on in a fire is sort of suffocate it. They throw too much on there and it actually hinders it because you need that oxygen. So really all you want is this real, real thin stuff. Just little tiny twigs. The drier the better because once you start building that heat in there you can throw on the bigger bigger stuff that might be a bit damp and it's no problem this is where you can get a little bit too early but your pocket bellows by blowing gently just a little bit of air in there can really pick that flame up When it's pretty early on, you don't want to blow directly at the flame either. Sort of blow off to the side just to swirl a bit of air around the flame. Like we said, all this stuff is really wet. So that's why it's taken a little bit to get going. Um, a lot of fires we've had, uh, you know, in outback New South Wales, it's literally one strike of a ferro rod into some dry, you know, tinder, and it's up and going. Um, if you spend a bit more time at the start building that heat, it will save you time later on. And from here, really, it's just sort of building up in size in your timber not suffocating the flame and if it does sort of start to dip a little you can use your bellows just to get a little bit of oxygen in there it really increases the temperature it starts building it up again really nicely watch for the flame and the heat to start spreading through your little sticks once it starts to lose a bit of that intensity, you're gonna to wanna to add a little bit more on, a little bit, little bit, little bit at a time. Um, and just, you wanna gradually build it up. Um, another thing you I didn't mention before, you wanna avoid uh, what they call green timber, green wood. Don't just go cut off a branch of a tree because it's not gonna work. You have to have dead, dry timber um even some dead branches on the ground when you snap them if there's a bit of flex and stuff like that in them they're too green you just you really want the really dead dry timber that just snaps cleanly in half 
is as it starts to build up, I continue that cross pattern. The main thing that does is stop everything rolling off. You'll go sort of a few wide, go east-west, then north-south, east-west, north-south. <coughs> and that sort of builds the frame of it. Um, once you get a lot of heat in there, you can sort of throw it on however you want. But at the start, I, I just like keeping the structure to it. The other thing that this sort of cross hatch uh, pattern allows is the air can actually cross through underneath the bigger bits at the bottom. They're not even close to burning yet, but you've got the air coming in from underneath coming up into that, that flame that you want to build. All right guys, so that's starting to get going. You can see the heat's starting to build in there. So all I'm gonna do is just sort of keep adding little sticks here and there just to continue that heat. There's plenty of different ways to do this. Everyone's different, everyone will have their own technique. We're not telling you this is how you have to do it. It's just a few little tips that might help some people. Practice makes perfect. Uh, just give it a few goes. The best way to learn is obviously with perfect conditions. If you learn with dry timber in a good spot, all the things you need, then you can start pulling away from that. So when you're in an environment where it's all wet and you really need or want a fire going, uh, you're that much uh, further ahead to sort of get you started. So as you can see, uh, we're on our way to a pretty established fire, even with wet timber. Uh, a lot of it is in the preparation and then just the patience to build it properly. You can't just go, like you can see, probably people who were here before threw on something way too big for the fire and you see it all the time. Um, people go too big too quick there's not enough heat to burn through it and it just sort of smoulders away. Uh, just invest that time early on, be patient, and practice makes perfect. Uh, luckily, if you are really struggling, um, there's plenty of things out there that can help you. Uh, the pocket bellows is a huge thing. Like, I would never go camping without one now. Even like I said earlier in the video, if you don't need it to start a fire, but uh, you camp overnight and want to kick that fire back up in the morning, you got hot coals. Just with those coals, a bit of bark or something, you can blow that pocket bellows and uh, fire it up again. So it's hugely helpful. As we said, with the ever fire, if the timber's that wet or you just sort of not in the mood to collect, the timber um, that's the right size. You can skip that sort of tinder and almost kindling size and just have that going, burning into a bigger bit of timber. Once that's going, you're good to go. All right, guys, uh, we're about probably 40 minutes or so, uh, 30, 40 minutes into the fire. And you can see there's quite a good um, bed of coals underneath and that's enough heat to be getting into these um, bigger cut bits of timber that are wet. When you throw them on you're obviously going to see the steam and stuff from the moisture coming out of them but as long as you've got enough heat built up under them it'll keep eating into the timber, dry it out and start burning through. So. We should be pretty good for the rest of the night now with what we've got here. So hopefully that helps a few people that aren't very familiar with building a fire and sort of getting it to um, carry on through the night. A big thing that we've noticed never really gets mentioned is you really always need to make sure you put this out properly. The best way is if you've got like a pop-up bucket or something like that, go down to the creek or river if there's one nearby, um, grab a few loads and fully extinguish the flame because in the morning 
it can look like it's completely out and then you scratch away an inch or two of the ash and there's hot coals there ready to go. So make sure you fully extinguish uh, the fire and the coals, put it out properly. It can cause a lot of problems if you don't. Uh, it can start a fire, people or animals can walk across it and get pretty badly injured. So make sure you do everything safely and properly. Do you want to duck down a bit? No, my ankle's fucked. All right. <laughs> Go back a bit so you can get okay. it. Okay. Um, what's it called? Pyramid? So what do you want me to actually say? Hold on. Do you want to bring it like here and look at- It might be in there though. Is that not in there? Check it. Check that. No, that isn't. That's just filming here. That's good. Yeah. 